Agreed. 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 Wesley Johnson on, who is a filmmaker, a composer, a paranormal investigator. Is yeah, there anything I'm missing, Wesley? I've uh, d- done a couple things. <laughs> that, that's you're enough. all over the place. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah, we'll leave it um, there. So, Wesley, you told me you're from Owatonna. Yes. Uh, living in Mankato now. Do yep. um, you just want to talk a little bit about, first of all, what you do for a living? Or is it any of the three things I just named? Uh, a, a little bit. So, I, I, we're working on it. You <laughs> yeah, know, it's, it's yeah. kind of, it's the, uh, I think it's the nature of being an artist. You yep. know, you're, you're, you're the grind goes in every which direction you hope something lands. So yeah. um, I do a little bit of everything. I do some videography for, for more of a living. Um, so not not as fun, but yeah. still filming. Like and wedding videos. Wedding like videos, okay. things like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I kind of have a rule because I do the same thing. I do video okay. work for a living. One of my rules, there's two rules that go by. I don't shoot porn and I don't do <laughs> weddings. On my website, it says I don't yeah. do porn or weddings. Yep. And everyone's yep. like, why don't you do weddings? You can make a lot of money. I can't handle the stress. It's so much work, uh, man. I it's can't. So... I just can't. And the, can't well, the funny it. thing about weddings is I never, there was never, a, and this is probably true for a lot of videographers. I don't yep. think anybody ever wakes up one day and thinks, I'm going to do weddings. No. Like, that's my calling no. in life. <laughs> no. You know? no, so it, it just kind of fell on me on accident. Like really? I, I kind of started playing around, and, and the funny thing is, um, so I don't know if you ever played around with just the Osmo. Oh, right, little, yeah. little steady cam, yep, right? Yep. Um, so I have this uh, this buddy, maybe another person you should talk to sometime down the road, Rico Roman. Rico you know, Roman. If that name rings a bell at all, this dude's a, a trip. Sounds like a about. sweet name. It's, it's like mean, a wrestler or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, well, we, we joke about that all the time because it's it's Rico Roman, and then my name is Wesley Johnson. So I think you go from <laughs> one of the most kind of catchy, ringy names to the one most of the mid- most common names, yeah. so. <laughs> most Midwestern thing yeah. you've ever heard. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, but uh, I picked up this Osmo from him. I do some like kind of corporate shoots with him. Okay. He kinda, he's the one who kind of got me into the into the game yeah. a little bit. Yep. Um, but I would just use this little thing, and I just loved it. Uh-huh. I mean, and that was before I really knew how to do anything. Yeah. I had no cameras. I just kind of I could eye up a shot. Yep. And eventually he was like, "Dude, you just you need to just take that." You know, he's like, "I don't I don't <laughs> use it. You use it all the time." Just gave it to it's you. A thing. So I did it, and then it just so happened I had a couple friends getting married, and they're oh. like, "Do you want to run around and?" Do stuff and I'm like, okay, let's do it. And yep. then the rest was history. And now, yeah. you know, 15 weddings later, I'm wow. like, okay, I guess I'm kind of catching on. And that's a good thing with weddings because people who are, especially if you find like the middle aged people that are getting married, they have friends that are getting married. Yep. So as soon as you do yeah. one, it's word like, of mouth. You got like a contract for ten at least. It's, it's it. It's yeah. all. I mean, yeah, I don't think I've ever gone out of my way to yep. get a gig. It's all. It's yeah. all been word of mouth. And yep. then of course you put the videos online and yep. people see it. And yep. It's, you know, it's it's like you said. It's you, it's there's good money in it. Oh but, yeah. Oh my god. You see the Facebook posts. Anyone know anyone that could do weddings? And then they got like <laughs> yeah. ninety. Oh, you gotta get tag, tagged tag, all tag, the time. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It happens. It's like a bittersweet thing. Because yeah. on one yeah. end you're like. Okay, it's a gig, but then you're like, oh, it's a wedding though. <laughs> you're, you're pulling up pictures of the bride and the yeah. groom. You know, you're trying not to judge, but yeah. then you're looking. And you're like, is this a bride zone? Is this gonna... <laughs> you know, luckily everybody, yeah. every wedding I've shot, everybody's been great. I oh, haven't. Really? I've never had any of the bridezilla like nightmare yeah. scenarios. Uh, Rico has other stories. Really? So he's yeah, he's felt the other the wrath from the other side. I yep. never have. Everybody, yep. everybody's wedding I've shot. Yep. You're like, there goes another Saturday. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, that's... that's the other bad part. The week, it's on, they're always on weekends, which, yep. you know, you got to commit then. Yeah. Yep. The worst, my worst nightmare when I, I did a couple weddings was what happens if you have a faulty SD card oh or you don't record something accidentally, you know, yep. you can't go back. All right, let's redo the vows. Like, you can't go back. Yeah. If you miss the most important person in that person, or the most important important moment in that person's life you're done that's it you're done that's it and, yeah. and you know that they are g- coming at it with all the expectations oh yeah you know even 100%. if they don't say it you yep. know they they're paying you yep. to capture the most important yep. day of their lives yep. at that mo- so yeah that's that's the stress every single time uh-huh. i'm going th- you're always going through that like oh uh-huh. my god what if even though i have like five cards yep. and all all this back what if something goes wrong yep you know and you go to the rehearsal and everything is like okay this will be easy and then you go to the wedding and everything changes and oh, then, yeah. and then they're like well, why didn't you capture that 
It's like, well, it was a random thing that happened. It no ju- one had any idea it was going to come. Yep. Th- things are changing, and you're right there with them. And it's, yep. Yeah, I always say once I get through, you know, it's it's nice that they kind of, a lot of times they'll have the pictures and the yep. breakfast and the hair and all yep. that stuff. That's like kind of an ease, a nice way to ease yeah. into it because they're nervous too. Yeah. You know, so you're yep. kind of just like going through the motions, but it's like the ceremony all the time. Always, uh-huh. There's this moment of like reckoning where I just feel <laughs> nauseous, and I'm like, oh, yeah. my God, this is this. This is the thing. Uh-huh. This is what they care about. Yep. You know? So yeah. once we get through that, then it's whatever. Then everybody's getting drunk and dancing. Oh yeah, it doesn't matter. And then but... they and then the reception's the best. I mean, that's yep. fun. You just oh, do whatever yeah. you want. Yep. Get fun yep. shots and yeah. I the, totally I respect you for point. doing that weddings. <laughs> yeah, I respect you for doing that. Thank I can't you. myself do it. How did you get into filmmaking? Like, what was the the thing? Was it a movie? A lot of people have like a movie they saw, um, yeah. you know, that turned them on. They're like, oh, I got to make a movie. Or what made you get into that? That is that is the the best question. Um, I, I mean, I think for me, growing up, I've always been a movie buff. I yeah. mean, that's just from a young age. I, I was blessed with parents who were super great. I mean, I was I was one of those kids that my parents were like taking me to R rated movies when I was <laughs> you know ten or something. Yeah, yeah. Because um, my parents were that way too. Uh-huh. So that, I think that's how it started. You know, I have Wesley, all. The, you gotta see this one. <laughs> I mean, that's that's it. Yeah, they would take me to. I mean, even things now looking back as an adult, where I'm like. I don't, I, should you have shown me yeah, that, you know, yeah. like I'm Human questioning centipede at 12. <laughs> yeah. As a, as a parent myself, I'm like, wow, you, once you become a parent, you realize yep. like what your parent, you know, how, what uh-huh. kind of parents you oh, had, yeah. you know? Yep. Um, but I think that's how it started. I've always, I've always been big into film. Um, I was one of those kids that ran around with the home video camera, oh, you know, yeah. making, yep. making my brother do stunts on the, tra- <laughs> yep. my younger brother body yep. slamming him, you yep. know, WWF on the trampoline, that kind <laughs> of thing. Sounds familiar for yeah. some reason. Oh, yeah, we, yeah. Can, we can relate to that a hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's just the, those are those moments. And of course now my, you know, my brother's younger, but of course he's like two feet taller than me and, oh, yeah. and takes it, pay, pays it back every opportunity <laughs> yeah. he gets. But. That's awesome. Uh, but no, it started with that. So mm-hmm. I, I would, I was always kind of into it. Um, the funny thing is, I think as I kind of grew up a little bit, was going to school. I went to school for music. Oh, really? So that kind of my life somewhere kind of took this left turn. Yep. Where I was in bands and touring, and that was I kind of just thought that was what I was going to do. Uh huh. Um, kind of scratched that itch and and got through it. Realized that touring in real life is not you know what you dream it's going to no. be. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so I, I kind of got through that. And then the filmmaking, the, the other thing I've always done is I've, I've always been a writer. Oh, um, yep. So I think that's writing stories and just that was always my escape. You know, yeah. some people read a book. Some people, you know, go skating. I mean, everybody's got their thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that was just always my thing. So once the music thing kind of that trajectory shifted a little bit, yep. started taking the writing a little more seriously. And it just... Wow. Uh, Started happening, you know. You and get, get with the right people. And... Yeah, I see a lot of the parallels between me and you because I, when I was really young, I'd write all the time, read sure. all these books, and I was convinced I was going to be an author. Yeah, yeah. And then it became movies. Uh, but we grew up, and we would put videos on YouTube. Oh, sure. I'm assuming yep. though, for you, you didn't have that same. It wasn't thing. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. You guys, that's the nice thing is, I mean, how old are you guys? Like, I'm 22. 20, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you guys, you're, you're like that prime. That's that prime age where yep. everything's digital. You got the yep. internet. You got yep. YouTube. Yep. Um, yeah. For me, it's like YouTube was it became much later. Yeah. You know, for uh-huh. me, it, for me, it was like taking the family video camera uh-huh. and then everything came out on a cassette. Okay. Yep. So you would the way <laughs> the way we did it back in the day is you'd have like two VCRs and if you wanted to oh. edit a video. You have one like blank cassette that you're using as your master, and then you're pausing and playing and recording. And pot- <laughs> I mean, look, look I'm sure there's stuff on YouTube about that. Oh yeah, I mean that. Yep. That's how we did it. Yep. Now, now YouTube is just a oh, miracle, yeah. and so. it's got to be tough to get for back then to get exposure. Yeah, it's not it's not the same. You know, yes. yeah, because I mean, when you were growing up, you you couldn't just post it on the internet for everyone to see. You had to go right. out of your way to show people like here's yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. It's you know? kinda it's there's kind of a double edged sword there because on one hand there's there's not as much competition. Yeah. You know, not a lot of people are doing it because they don't know how to do it. So yep. you have I think you have a better shot. There's more of a market there. Now things are so much easier, but I mean, how many everybody's doing videos and everyone's doing a stuff. photographer. Right, yeah. right. Then you watch it and some <laughs> you of these pe- so you watch people who just pick it up and you're like 
that shit is great. Yeah. Like, that's way better yep. than anything I yep. can do, yep. you know? Well, so. and the phones nowadays, I mean, like, the Samsung's oh. got, like, the 20 times view on it, and you, yep. anyone could pick that up, and it's got 4K video. Yep. Everything looks beautiful. That's, yeah. You don't have I, to uh, try nowadays to have, like, beautiful stuff. No, no. It just, <laughs> it just, it just happens. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. I actually just edited, uh, I got a lot of friends that, with the film stuff. We do a lot of, like, 48 film festivals and mm. that stuff. I just edited a, a buddy's film. He ha- He was at another convention doing something else. Hmm. Got an idea for a. He likes to do sort of these weird kind of. It's almost like it's like documentary style, but he's kind of one of those in his own mind. It makes yeah. sense, and <laughs> yeah. he might be some kind of genius level that we don't get. Yeah. But he yeah. got this idea and started filming this thing. He's like, "Hey, do you want to edit this really quick? Just shot it all on his phone. Yeah, looks looks great. Uh huh. You know, and like, it just it's comes just, to him. Just crazy that we just have this in the palm of our hand. Yeah, you know. Yeah, which is kind of great though. It's, it, it is. I think we have a lot more artists who would probably never put that effort out yep. if it if they didn't have that ease you know yep. that access so. yep and well the other part about it too is with you know the ease of access of youtube and everything you can you find right now it seems like there's almost a trend going from hollywood movies to indie yep. film you know what i mean like yep. hollywood it, people are kind of getting sick and tired of the sequels coming out yeah and the same movies they're remaking all these 80s movies that came out yep. you know they remake ghostbusters and they're remaking star wars yeah. and they're doing all this you know they're adding on it's like people want fresh ideas, right? And the only people that seem to be doing that are indie film, the, the indie film, indie yep. filmmakers. Yep. And now you can get on Amazon, you can get your films on Amazon, right. and if you're lucky, you get them on Netflix and For get sure. that exposure that you know Amazon accepts about everything. Yeah. You, know, you oh, can yeah, get yeah. any movie they're on not, Amazon. They're not. There's nothing they're not going to take. Yeah. yeah. If you get a movie, if you get your movie on Netflix, you could be going somewhere because everyone yep. will see that. Right. I mean, that's that's what's really kind of interesting with the with the whole film industry as a whole is I think what, once you kind of start to get into it, you can see where the motivation is. Yeah. Right. It's like Hollywood yep. is is about the money. Yep. Um, not and not all. I mean, granted, yeah. there's some studios in Hollywood that are that are awesome. But exactly, I mean, you could yeah. tell where it's like that's with all the the reboot generation. Yep. Let's take all these intellectual properties that have already succeeded and let's yep. try to kind of just ride the coattails yep. of that. Yep. Um, whereas I think with a lot of the indie stuff, it's it's about views. You know, oh, I mean, yeah. that's what everybody wants. They want the exposure. They yep. want to get their idea out there. Yep. And some of those ideas are, you know, that's like you said, that's where the originality is coming from. Oh, yeah. They want to so. tell their own story. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, you look at like Napoleon Dynamite or, right. you know, some of these cult films that One came of the out. greatest. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> I yeah. love that yep. movie. And those guys, they're just film students that made that from BYU. Right. Uh, you know, if you know the story behind that, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I yep. mean, those are like the things that indie filmmakers look up to. And I don't right. know how much Napoleon Dynamite costs to make. I don't know how much the budget was. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine that I've much. I've heard though. it before, but I can't remember yeah. what it was. Yeah, I'm sure it's less than a million dollars. Oh, it's yeah, yeah. Be. Like, it's a, like be. a microme of what they made on the back end. Oh, 100%. And this yeah. was before, uh, like, the internet, wasn't it? When Napoleon Dynamite came out? Or, like, this was early. I think. Yeah, it was kind of, like, right early. on that cusp, I yeah. think. Yeah, and so they didn't have anything. They had to, I think it just went around uh, from, like, college town to college town. It kind of yeah. took off. And now Napoleon Dynamite's huge. It's a cult classic. Oh, yeah. 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 People just think it's so stupid. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. It's genius. It's it like, you know, genius. The thing, that's, I mean, I think for some people, though, it's like, that's that's the that's comedy mm-hmm. for me. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never... Oh, I love it. The dry I've, humor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I've never been crazy. With all my film stuff, it's like, most of it's horror, and, yep. you know, like, that's just kind of what I fell to, but yep. I, I can appreciate a good comedy uh-huh. and that is my type of comedy it's a where funny it's just movie. like what the hell am i watching <laughs> it's yep. so over the top and it's so yep. ridiculous but it's just dry and the cat the, <laughs> the cast characters are amazing <laughs> just absolutely perfect yeah yep. you know it's it's a great movie and you were talking about uh the, some of the movies you've done well, I, and i'm not familiar too much with what you've done can you kind of talk about some of the movies you made short films what are they longer? sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what are some of the things you've done i've done yeah so i've kind of bounced around a little bit uh i've, I've been lucky enough to to be um, for me, I've I've been on some bigger sets in terms of getting some exposure and kind of yep. seeing how things go. M- most of my stuff, in terms of like my writing and my producing, have definitely been more the short film stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually am. We are finishing up next week. We're going up north to finish the last half of our first feature film. Oh, really? Um, yep. Yeah, so a couple different production partners that I have that wow. we've been we've been going at that for like two years. Wow. Um, so how do you how do you pull that all off then? Is it uh, private uh, like fundraising? How are you doing that? Because we've done like Kickstarters, and right? Stuff. Right. Yep. Um, I, it's like everything and anything. Really? You know? Yeah. It's. I think that's for the first time doing a feature film. 
it's so different than doing a short film. Oh, because 100%. Because th- that money doesn't matter. You're no. just making your own, you yep. know what I mean? It yep. doesn't matter. Trying to but... tell your best story in a very short amount of yep. time. And, it, but, and, that's, and I love that, though. To me, that's, yep. that's kind of where I thrive, where it's like, let's get our buddies together. Yep. You know, these pers- these people are good at all these things. Yep. Like how I met Starf, right? He's just yep. a pizza delivery guy who, <laughs> yep. who happens to be a sound guy, went to yep. school for sound. Yeah. So it's like, come on, buddy, we're doing it, yep. you know? Yep, Um, But it's, yeah, feature film is just so different because now it's you're kind of tapping into the Hollywood vein a little bit yep. of how, how are we going to make our money back? Mm-hmm. You know, how, how are we going to get a distribution deal? Exactly. We're learning all these things we've never yep. really had to think about before. Yeah, yep. Um, So we've done, wow. the, yeah, we did... Um, I think we did like an Indiegogo or a crowd. We did some sort of, sort of crowdfunding yeah, that yep. helped a little bit in the beginning, um, but that, even that was before we even really. Yeah. I think we probably should have done our homework on that a little more because mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of a vein that you tap once. Oh yeah, you know, yep, you yep. you do something, it's successful, yep. cool, but there, you can only get away with that so many times exactly. before people are kind of like, all right, yeah, you know, yeah. we did we did four of them. Did you? We okay. did four, and I couldn't believe we raised the amount of. I mean, we didn't raise too much. We only raised like seven grand. But that's I mean, uh, that's still good money. Though, yeah, you know, yeah, and for... I but I didn't think we'd be able to do it four times. You know, <laughs> right. the first it one was sucks begging people. Oh, it's, horrible. Horrible. It's, it's so hard. It's like yeah, how many times can you do this? Yeah, I uh, yeah that was that was my thing right from the beginning. Is I'm just I it's just such an uncomfortable concept for me. Yep. Um, and I went into it fully aware, like okay, so how many of us? There's three of us. Okay, your mom's gonna throw us a couple <laughs> yeah. hundred bucks. Your mom will throw us. A, I'm yep. like, we're not walking yep. away from here with yep. more than a than a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. You know? uh, Shake we, down the whole family. Pretty right. Much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and we we did okay. Yeah. But yeah. It's just such a new new thing yeah you know it's uh, tough it's extremely difficult to not only make the feature film raising the money yeah. and then getting all your friends and family i don't know if you guys have professional actors or not whenever we've done it just been family and friends right. yeah. helping us out because we haven't been able to pay anybody really right so it's just all been passion projects that's, that's mostly what it's been for us too yeah. you know i think the nice thing about minnesota I'm getting a little distant from the mic. Uh, the yeah, nice, the nice thing about Minnesota is like we we have a surprisingly oh, yeah. like good film community. You know, yep. um, it's there's just there's a lot of people that have kind of I've lost a lot of friends to California. I've uh, made some new friends that have come back from <laughs> yep. California. Yeah, uh, it's kind of this like revolving door of talent. Yeah, um, yep. as long as you know where to look. But I, I think we're blessed with that. There's, oh, yeah. there's good people. There's real, you know, the other good thing is everyone wants to help out. They right. just want to help in some way. That's yeah. that's the most beautiful thing about it. You, know, yep. you got people who take acting very seriously, yeah. but they just they just want to work. Yeah. You know, they yep. just want to they just want to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, finding, finding those people, same thing, I think with, you know, camera people and sound people and everything else, there's just a lot of people trying to make that. And to me, that's my favorite thing is I think a lot of us to an extent are in that together. Yeah. We're on this, we're in this pursuit of trying to make our dreams come true and we're figuring it out and we're falling together and we're learning yep. together. Yep. Um, so it's most of our people have been that. Yeah. Um, we have had the, had the luxury of working with SAG a little bit and having a couple oh. actual actors come yeah. in. Wow. Um, yeah, that's a lot of stress, oh, you know, yeah. and I mean, not that it's a bad thing, but you're dealing with real actors, you know, yeah. you're dealing with the union, yep. you know, you're going to get next level talent. Yeah. Uh, but now you, you got a close eye on you. You got, you know, you got all these protocols. Yeah. It's, it's a good learning experience. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I've I'll never put it done that, that before. I've never done yeah. it. So I'm interested to get into that sometime in the future. Yeah. Cause it's just, like I said, it's been family and friends working right. with people we know yep. the whole, I mean, Wyndham came together and we made all these movies, and it's just like everyone in the community helped us out. That's the best. Though. It those, is. those are the stories, yeah. you know. Oh, that's for sure. at the end of the day, it's like yep. those are the things you're gonna latch onto that yep. matter. Yep. You know, one yep. day you'll become a Hollywood hack, and you got <laughs> you've made all this money and made all these movies, but you're just like, I just want to go back to yeah. that. You yeah, know, I don't. Uh-huh. And we and we've all, I think, in our little unit, we've we've had those days. Oh, you know, yeah. we've had those days yep. where I'm like, this is just getting a little too professional for yep. me. Yep. You know. Yep. Um, I think with so the the film we're finishing up is called The Curse of Raven Heights. Okay. In case anybody wants to, we ha- I think yeah. our, our teaser trailer, our first teaser trailer is out there already. Oh, we'll put a link for that e- for sure. Even though we haven't fin- we haven't finished the movie yet, <laughs> yeah. so that's yeah. how you know <laughs> yeah. rogue we are. Yeah. Um, but uh, so like going through that right now, it's like we finalized the script, and I think I've probably in the last two and a half weeks, I think I've rewritten that thing 
five or six times. You know, you go really? back in, you comb through it, you're yep. changing stuff, you're changing. Yep. You think it's locked in, you send yep. it to all the actors, then all of a sudden, nope, nope, there's another thing we have. Yep. <laughs> so it's uh, it's an adventure. Has it been tough with COVID to finish the project? Or? That part makes it a little challenging. Yeah, yeah. that was in, in big part. We wanted to, um, we, we'd always planned on splitting it up into two chunks. Um, this second chunk we had originally planned to do sooner. Oh, yeah. Um, and we also had some pretty good, you know, more key uh, actors lined up yep. and that's that's a whole nother like dealing with sag and their protocol for covid is just i mean oh at an indie gosh. level you're never going to be able no, to do it you no, know no you're you got a rapid test i think every three days and to get really? a, like, to get an actual rapid test is like a few hundred bucks oh I mean, yeah it's, it's crazy it's it's crazy so yeah. that was something that we there's there's been some hurdles and, and roadblocks and i think that's making it kind of tough for everybody yeah 100%, you know but yeah. uh it's uh we, we kind of have it worked out now with this next thing we we have a lot of like compliance things that we have to follow most of it's outside which okay great covid wise yeah gonna suck for everybody if it stays like it is oh right now outside. gosh yeah yep. hopefully it warms up because this is getting out of hand with the snow we've had today <laughs> yeah, yeah it's i uh, we're, we're hoping so because it's funny because this whole uh like portion of the film that we're we're doing uh is is kind of it's supposed to kind of give you that like 70s sort of charles oh. man uh think like uh uh once upon a time in hollywood style okay. right yeah it's supposed to kind of have that aesthetic yeah uh, and of course now we have like you know five inches of snow on the ground. So we <laughs> we actually <laughs> we had a call about that earlier. We're like, okay, so now we're at like a hippie like w- winter wonderland yeah. camp. <laughs> I'm like, uh, gotta switch it up a little bit yeah. now. Or something. Luckily, I don't have to deal with you know. Like yeah. it's not my call to make. I'm yeah. just I'm just writing the stories. You yeah. know what do you want me to do? <laughs> What's your official role in the movie? Like, are you the director? Are you the writer? No. So yeah, I'm I'm the writer. That's that's my my bread and butter. I'm an executive producer too. Okay. So kind of those things. Got Gotcha. Are my, you know, yeah. that's my main thing. Yeah, we'll so. put a link for that for sure because cool. I think more people want to check that out. Sure. When's yeah, the yeah. release date? Is there a release date? Uh, we don't have a solid one yet. We're, we're hoping sometime uh, fairly early 2021, but, okay. you know, who knows if it's it'll tough actually. To know. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah you, you have your ambition of yep. what you're going for, and then there's the reality. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I get but, that 100%. Yeah, wow. but we we figured we've we've been kind of dragging that along for a while. So yeah. I think everybody's kind of amped to, to yep. sort of finish it. Well, up, keep me so. updated on that because we'll post will, updates yeah. on that. Awesome. Let's Absolutely. switch the conversation sure. to paranormal because this mm. is one of the other things that I know you're into. The paranormal. <laughs> it's getting close to Halloween, and it is Halloween. We, it got, is the, Halloween. we got the thing I... out here. We got some things behind you. I, lo- I love it. I lo- yeah, I love that you guys decorated. We for got me. we great. got the Bohemian Grove. Even though it's not really Halloween, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. you know, the Ill- Illuminati. We got just, some stuff in here. We're just missing the Ouija board. Yep. and then uh, you know, like the crystal ball. Yep. And... We got an axe on the wall up there. That's a yes. fake axe. Oh, that's, that's awesome. It's a foam one from a movie nice. we did. It looks real. It does. Uh, yeah. One of the places we bought it from makes them so really okay. interesting we got some movie props but going into paranormal how did you i mean are has it been like something that affected you when you were young like did go did you see a ghost like how did you get oh. into this oh yeah oh yeah fun <laughs> you stuff, got so. stories okay I, oh i got see a ghost. <laughs> uh, did you see a ghost? yeah maybe once or twice um, <laughs> yeah no i've uh so paranormal uh we, I know we were kind of talking about a little, this yeah. a little bit before the show, but yep. it's just interesting how that sort of came back around and became yeah. a part of my life because I I've always been into it. Uh huh. Um, I uh, used to go to theater when I was probably like eight or nine, and that's when I had my first experience ever. Oh. Um, and I, I got I got loads of stories, but I'll tell you that story. Awesome. Um, so I uh, the lady who used to do daycare for my brother and I, um, her daughter was the one who was one of the people kind of chaperoning and running the show. Oh, gotcha. So I would go with her, and it was it was basically just kind of it's like a theater workshop for kids. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a nice thing, but small little Midwest, right? There's never a shortage of that kind of stuff. No. So, uh-huh. <laughs> um, so it's called Little Theater of Owatonna, and uh, I would go with her, um, and we were always the first ones to show up. Which was cool, and I remember she brought uh, brought me in. We're waiting for all the other kids to like show up, and it's pitch black in there, right? Mm. All you see is the exit signs, yep. And then there's like the little lighting booth up above, oh, you know. Oh, yep. Um, and I just remember her making me stand on the stage. She's like, "I just need you to stay here. I'm gonna go kick the lights on, but I don't want you to fall off the stage, you mm-hmm. know." So she's like, "Just stand, stay here." You know? Yep. So I'm like, "Okay, cool." How, wait, how old are you at this point? I, I I think I was probably nine. Okay, you know, give yep. give or take somewhere yep. somewhere, somewhere younger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Younger somewhere, than a teenager. Definitely younger than teenager. Okay. Yeah. So I remember standing on the stage, and I'm already like, "This is creepy," <laughs> right? Like, where she left me, and all I see is the exit signs. Yep. 
Um, and so she's gone for a few minutes and then, you know, I'm hearing some noises and stuff, but I'm just, I'm not thinking about it. Yep. Uh, and then all of a sudden I see her up in the lighting booth or oh. who, who I assumed was her. Yep. Right. So yep. I see somebody up there. I figure, okay, that's the place where they do the lights. So uh-huh. she's turning the lights on, you know, <laughs> but she kept looking at me and kept waving. And I just thought, I remember thinking that it was just really weird. I'm like, yeah. why is she just waving to me? Turn <laughs> the lights on. Like, I can stand in here. Yeah. So she's just waving. Yep. And all of a sudden, the lights kick on. And she's backstage. So oh, she walks my. out from the back. And I just remember being really confused. You know? Because, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm young. And uh-huh. I'm like, what, what <laughs> is that? You know? And, of course, now I look up there and there's nothing there. You know? Um, and wow. uh, I... Th- I that's where I don't really remember what happened after that. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know what I yep. mean? It's kind of, I yep. remember that moment. Wow. Um, and of course there was a number of other experiences at this place that really, I just remember that was when I decided like, okay, there's, this is real. Yeah. That's when you started um, believing in ghosts at that point. Right. Yeah. Wow. And, and I, again, I'll credit my parents for this, right? My, <laughs> my dad is like, you know, he's about as, as like Catholic, a Christian as you can get, yep. right? Yeah. Born Catholic, doesn't want to acknowledge demons and any you know what mm. i mean not not that my my dad's kind of a dork but he's not you know, he's not like <laughs> super dork but yeah. he just doesn't he doesn't care about that stuff he doesn't want to know yep you know he's one of those uh my mom's the opposite of that she's really? just like she's super into the stuff so it's really? probably her fault too that yep. i kind of had some exposure <laughs> yep uh maybe maybe i didn't see a ghost maybe i've just seen too many r-rated movies as a, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah it sounds like you saw a lot of r-rated movies when you were young so uh, maybe that was influencing that's you. that's probably what it was but that that was kind of the f- i I think the 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 stepping stone of yep. paranormal for me, and then of course as I got older, I just that curiosity never left. So wow, started kind of focusing, and re- I read a lot of books. I, I kind of studied up, you know. Yep, yep. Um, I, I went through a phase in my life where I kind of I, I call it like the the John Edwards phase. Mm. If you guys don't, know, if you guys are too young yeah, for that no, guy, I know John Edwards. He's is the, that. yeah, he's he was the TV <laughs> yeah. you know medium who could yep. you could talk yep. to your loved ones or whatever. Now I think that's kind of fucked up. I'm like, don't don't mess don't you know don't mess yep. with people's memories. Yeah, you know, yep. it's because it's yep. uh, I mean, that was about making money. I feel like a- absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there's one thing for for I think it's one thing for people to reach out to you and be like, hey, yep. I'm struggling with this in my life. Is mm-hmm. it can I you know can you use your talent to maybe help out exactly. somehow? There's a difference between that and then just blatantly you know, I, I don't know <laughs> whatever you want to call that <laughs> yeah yeah whatever that is so yeah. but uh but I, I was just always interested in that and um you know it just has kind of followed me all yeah. the way through my life and now huh. that i'm older and again we live in a digital age where we have yep. all this technology yep. and uh, of course it's paranormal stuff is just hot right now oh, i mean for sure. it, people 100%. are e- eating it up yep and yep. it's uh it's great you do, know? do you think that some people are more susceptible to see things because i myself i don't know about you Colin, i have never seen anything paranormal and we've been to some pretty haunted sure. places or whatever yeah so i i've talked to adrian about this before too and i can't oh, yeah, remember sure. his exact answer sure he had a good answer uh, yeah it, i though. can't remember his exact answer but i think it had to do with energy and stuff like that right some yep. people uh just don't have like the the thing or whatever it is i know adrian has like a special ability to where he can yeah. he has this thing where he can really focus in yeah. and see these the things or whatever i have never had that i don't know if that's one of that like a thing where if i just can't like i don't know is it I, uh, a skill like what is it i mean i i would my again i think it, it's it's definitely open for interpretation everybody kind of has their their opinion mm-hmm. um, or their theory you know because i don't think anybody really knows no you know i mean that's no. that's kind of the what keeps all of us coming back and keeps all yep. of us interested in it is yep. it's it's not a locked in science no. you know everything's being sort of figured out yep. and um, my thing would be that definitely the energy thing, though. I think that some people are, are probably just naturally more susceptible to it. Yep. Um, I think probably more so there's, there's a, a, and maybe not necessarily you, but I know a lot of people who not only haven't they seen things, but they don't necessarily want to see things okay. either. You know, yep, yep. they kind of just have their blinders on yep. of, okay. And, and I just had a lot of friends who obviously growing up, being me, yeah, uh, and yeah. having a lot of Midwest Midwestern friends uh-huh. who had nothing better to do, who yep. came along probably for the beer, <laughs> yeah, uh, and whatever girls we had with us, yeah, um, yep. <laughs> But of course, then things are happening, and they kind of just are like, oh shit, no, no, yep. no, 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 yep. Get, I'm getting out of this basement. I'm yep. leaving this asylum or wh- wherever yep. we happen to be on uh-huh. that Friday night. Yeah, you know. Um, so I think some people kind of it's just sort of that 
maybe like kind of a flight instinct. Mm. Um, and for those people, if you're, some people are actively not looking. Yeah. You know, but yeah. I, what's, what I always find interesting is everybody has that instinct though. Mm-hmm. You know, there's that voice inside your head when you go down to the basement. Oh, hundred percent. By yourself. Yep. And if, you know what I mean? Yep. It's like. You could run an experiment on anybody. You yeah. know, be like, hey, yeah. can you, I'm going to turn the light on, go down in the basement, and I just yep. need you to grab this thing for me really quick. Yep. You know? And then when they get down there, kick the light off. Oh, yeah. 90%. Be like, turn that back on. 90%. Then their of, mind goes in a thousand <laughs> right. directions. I mean, not, whoop, I keep bumping the skeleton guy. <laughs> the skeleton guy. Say 90% <laughs> of people are going to react the same way. Yeah. Um, every yep. once in a while, you get somebody who are like, nope, yep. I'm, not, I'm not phased. <laughs> I'm not scared by yep. that. But everybody has yep. that instinct. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I think I want to believe though. Like it, it's one of those yeah. things where I want something to happen. I want to be scared. I want a ghost. I want something just to happen. Right. To me. Yep. And when with when we're with Adrian, it's like every spirit in town comes. It's like, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yep. everything is happening. He, that guy and then when we're not with Adrian, it's like nothing's here. There's yep. nothing. And you know, there's a building in Wyndham. It's called the Bark building. Okay. It's the old high school. And Adrian has done uh, investigations there before. Sure. We used to do the podcast there. Oh, and cool. so one after one podcast, we're walking around the building. We're with our buddy Mason. And someone's like tapping him on the shoulder and stuff. And I'm like yeah. seeing things and hearing things. Yep. And it's like Adrian's not there. We're there all the time. Right. Nothing happens. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. is Adrian, do they, they all love I, Adrian? Is Adrian I, I like. Think, <laughs> I think certain people, I think who you're around definitely can, yeah. can play a big role in that yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Some people, uh, excuse me, some people just like bring that energy. And it's like Adrian's definitely one of those. Yeah. Yep. I've had those, you know, where we, we've we done some of our, so we do a show called Paranormal Fact or Fiction. Yeah, I want to get into that. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's we have that airing on MCN6. It's kind of like public access cable. Oh, okay. um, it can You can stream it live on the mm-hmm. website or whatever. But um, So we do that show, and um, the episodes that we've done so far, we did at this old, God, what it was like some museum, literally in the middle, yeah. of, middle of nowhere, yeah. somewhere around. You know, around here somewhere. Um, but it's just like all this old history stuff. Yeah. You know, and uh, I remember I showed up and I was kind of looking around. I didn't get any. I wasn't getting any vibes. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, it's just it's an old museum. Yeah. Like bunch Adrian of, walks through the doors uh, and that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. Uh, it's like you get freezing cold. <laughs> yeah, I start out. I'm like, there's a bunch of old shit around. That's cool. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Adrian comes and starts telling stories, and yeah. all of a sudden, it just gets cold. Yeah. And everything changes, and I'm like, I don't know. You, and there's even, almost like a heaviness in the air. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can feel And he doesn't something. even have to try. It's just him being there. You <laughs> yeah. know, you're just I'm like, do, yeah. you, do you work with other like psychics? Because I'd yeah. be curious to see, do they do they get like irritated with you because you're just like a beacon? They can't know? even focus in on somebody because there's so much going on. And yeah. people might have no idea who we're talking about. Adrian Lee, we've had him on the podcast. I can link episodes two for that. Multiple times. He's yeah. he just has this like aura with him. It's like Adrian can talk to these things yeah. and he can bring them. And let's talk about the show because sure. you guys are doing the show, yeah. a paranormal fact or fiction, yep. and you were kind of explaining it to me before. Kind of yeah. tell people what the premise is of it. So yeah, so basically, and about TikTok because I like how oh, you brought sure, that yeah, in. Yeah, 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 I'll tell the story. So Adrian and I are both uh, kind of par- we're paranormal, you know, folks or whatever. Yeah, uh, and I was telling you guys. See, I didn't. I mean, the way I was introduced to him really didn't have anything to do with our mutual mm-hmm. love for that. I mean, I guess in a roundabout way it did, but. Um, he's working on a film called uh, Solving Crimes from Another Time. Oh, yeah. Um, I heard about and that. And it kind of dives into sort of his, you know, the thing with Adrian, he's a big history guy. Yep. And he uses his knowledge of history to communicate with spirits and yep. solve crimes. Or, you know what I mean? He's just, yeah. It's cool. Yeah. He's, he's a fascinating yeah. dude. Everybody, oh, yeah. I'm sure they all know from yeah. watching the yeah. show. But, <laughs> um, so he, uh, our producer friend, actually reached out to me about doing the score for his film. Mm. So that's another thing. You know, the music hasn't left me all the way, so I yeah. do that. But um, So she started telling me about the film, and I was just, I realized, like, I got to meet this guy. Yeah. You know, this sounds, you know, and of course she's like, yeah, you guys totally. Got to meet Adrian. You guys totally yeah. hit it off. Yeah. So um, I, I agreed to score his film, and, and that's that's going pretty well. It's a good, good film. It'll yeah, be spooky, I'm excited for that. Spooky I've in all the right ways. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, a few months later, we met. I uh, we were at a, a convention called MarsCon. Mm. Uh, it happens up in the Minneapolis. It's an annual kind of we'll call it a nerd convention of sorts. It's like a yeah. horror movie. So specific? Not, not necessarily. It's um, they do. Um, it's got a little bit of everything. Yeah, it's got a little bit of everything. Like Comic Con. It, it's kind of Comic Con. Yeah. They got you know they have some cosplay stuff and you know different panels or whatever. But I yep. was there on a film panel, kind of a Q and A filmmaking gotcha. sort of thing. So it's completely separate. But he also had a, a booth there. Oh, 
So kind of, you know, promoting his books and yep. doing his doing yep. his Adrian thing. Oh, yeah. Right? So, yep. yeah. So our, our friend was like, this is the time. You guys are going to yep. meet. You're going to sit down. Uh, we both thought, well, great. We don't have to be anywhere for at least like 10 minutes. We can yep. shake hands. We'll get a chance. Yep. Well, yeah. So we went and sat at the uh, at the bar oh. in the hotel. <laughs> and I think. Three hours later. Yeah, yeah. Right, I mean, pretty much. You <laughs> yep. know, it's like an yep. hour and a half later. We're yep. like, oh, shit, we got things to do, but whatever, you know. Yep. Um, so, so that was pretty cool. So that's how we kind of met. And it's, it's interesting. Cause I, yeah. you know, I think the, the contrast between Adrian and I is he's big on history. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't have a problem with history, but I would, I wouldn't consider myself a history buff. You're by, not going by, home and reading history. Uh, books. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not going home and watching yeah. history, reading <laughs> history books and watching yeah. the history channel. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm just, I'm more kind of modern in, in the way of, I got some of the tools that we use, you know, yep. some of the stuff you see on the TV shows. Yep. Yep. You know, I'm all about the tech and, yep. you know, the EMF and let's, mm-hmm. w- let's see if this thing can spike and, yep. you know. Um, he's definitely into that stuff too, but again, his history is, is sort of his backbone. So, uh, the TikTok thing, this is how he and I kind of started off the show is I, as I started dabbling with the TikTok, you know what the kids are, kids are into. It's what's viral right now. Yeah. It's it's big. It's what's happening. Everyone's on TikTok. It's what's making the money. It's, it's a great medium. It is. You know, it's a great medium. You can do I'm not a huge fan of it because I don't like all the dancing videos and stuff, but there's other things. Yeah. 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 There's, there's, there's so many things. And I think just the video aspect alone is, Mm -hmm. you know, again, as we were saying before, anybody can be a filmmaker. Now you got the green screen and the, you know, whatever. (laughs) So, I started kind of doing a shtick there where I was like, well, I'm just going to pull up, uh, I call it Paranormal Freaky Facts. So oh, yeah. It, uh, anybody's on, you know, TikTok. We'll put a link for that, too. <laughs> there we go. Um, but I was like, yeah, I'll just pull up some places and give some facts and kind of read. There's so much stuff on the internet. And oh, that, yeah. I feel like that was kind of the, the TikTok thing. Aside from all the dance videos, mm-hmm. everybody's kind of got a shtick. Yep. Um, yep. So I'm like, well, let's let's try it out. So I would pull up things. I, I started with Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Uh, mostly Minnesota-based things. And I'd read these things, and there would be quotes from him. You know, people on their website are literally quoting him. Yep. Um, for all these different things, whether it's from the book or, or just he had visited and they were they got a quote from him. Yep. Um, so me kind of being a nice, you know, sort of schmoozing a little bit, I'd, I'd send him the TikTok and be like, hey, I gave you a little yep. shout out. You know, these yep. people are quoting <laughs> you from this stuff. He'd read through and he's like, this is, you know, this is all rubbish. Yeah, oh, there, the there's my, there's yeah. my best Adrian. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this is quite rubbish, huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it I love of, the it accent. It sort of phases more yeah. into an Australian yeah. accent. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, he just would read. He's like, he's like, where are you getting this? This uh-huh. is wrong. You yep. know, there's, and I think my favorite, uh, I don't remember, it'll show up on the episode. We talk about it on one of the episodes, uh-huh. but somebody quoted him on, he would never go in there with more than one priest. <laughs> and he was so embarrassed by that. Because he's like, I... I I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. Um, so it kind of sparked this idea. There's a, there's another YouTube series um, that kind of follows the same platform. Some guy reads information off the web. Mm. Um, I saw uh, one of the episodes he sent me. Is some kid reading like Wikipedia facts about Alice oh, Cooper. Oh, gotcha. Right? And then Alice Cooper comes on the show <laughs> and, and ta- talks about what's accurate and yep. what isn't. That's you know? genius. So, yeah. so Adrian had this idea. Well, why don't we just sort of kind of do the same thing? I've yep. researched all these places. Yep. I've written books about these places. You do your you know little hipster thing and <laughs> grab some information off of the internet. Yep. And then we'll you know he can bunk it or. Yep. Or you know affirm it, yep. and uh, That's so awesome. so we did that. So, yeah, we did a little series, um, which people seem to be enjoying yeah. quite well. Uh, I mean, you That's guys awesome. have had him on. Adrian's one of those guys. He just he starts talking. Oh yeah, you know, yep. easiest gig I've ever had. Oh for mm-hmm. sure. Read, read a couple things, yep. and then I got at least twenty minutes. You know, where I can just <laughs> kick back while he yep. does his thing. Yep. You know, it's yep. fantastic. He knows so much about so many different walking things. Walking encyclopedia of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. you know what it's I mean. Awesome. He was in uh, the fourth feature film. He was. He was a doctor. Oh, yeah. He was a doctor <laughs> in it. Uh, That's awesome. He's got the British accent, which just really you know he's a smart guy, but it makes him sound smarter. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if you got the the accent yeah. and you're you know oh this guy's from another country you know what does he know he knows stuff that we don't know you know it's just He's, like he just has that kind of wisdom yeah about him yep. yeah and we we definitely played with that to, to that with our aesthetic a little bit in our show you yeah. know it's like well, yep. why don't, let's try to come at it with this whole sort of yin and yang thing but uh-huh. like we're kind of from like the opposite exactly you know? like yep. i'm not i just yep. like i said i i very clearly got dressed the way i dress yep. and i'm kind of <laughs> you know he's always got his sport coat on yep. his nice shirt yep. you know, he looks like he's written 20 books exactly you know? yeah and how many episodes are you guys doing and when are they coming out like when's so, the release schedule um yep so all the episodes we put them all on youtube 
um, right after they air. Okay. So our, uh, we do it every Sunday. We just had our fifth episode. I believe we have one more okay. for our first season. Gotcha. Um, we have uh, have some bigger, better things in the works, so there'll, oh. there'll be some more, I'm sure. Awesome. Um, but, uh, yeah, everything's uh, on YouTube. So yeah. even though they aired live right after they're done, we throw them on Paranormal Factor Fiction. Paranormal Factor Fiction. Um, wow. Yep, and you can find it on YouTube, Instagram. Yep. What has been um, Facebook. Facebook too? Yep. What has been the most wrong fact that is on the internet that Adrian has found like like you said rubbish? Oh, man, <laughs> cuz there's got to be, you know, like we talked about before, every town's got these like stories and some of them urban, it's kind of like urban, urban stories, legends, yeah. yeah it's yep. it's kind of like the telephone game. Every generation kind of tells it. Yeah. And by the end yep. it's like you started with a uh, someone had a car accident, and by the end, it's like they murdered their family, and it's like, right? Where it's, do you get all this from? <laughs> it's, like, it's like the internet, yeah. You know, it's yeah. like you said, it's yeah. yeah they, they the stories have a way of kind of finding themselves, and yep. it's like you said, the, the telephone game. Yep, yep. Um, and I would say surprisingly, a lot of our um, it, we, it always kind of almost becomes a like competition uh-huh. because we almost want it to get bunked, you yep. know. So we have episodes where the internet's just hitting it, yep. you know. It's like everybody kind of plays with us. We have yep. like watch parties with our with all the fans, like in the That's Facebook. Awesome. Group. Everybody wants the we. Uh, he's got what's called a bunk bell. A little bell. So right every in the time it's wrong, he's bunk, yep. you know he's dinging the <laughs> bell and doing yep. his doing his Adrian thing. <laughs> um, so there. It's one of those things where the stuff that's wrong is usually really wrong, mm-hmm. and I would say probably the the best one. Um, we did an episode on the Loon Lake Cemetery. Yep. Uh, I don't remember if we talked. I think we maybe talked a little pre-show. Pre-show. About that, but, yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, we did the Loon Lake Cemetery, and there's a lot of legend around the witch uh, yep. or witches of Loon Lake Cemetery. Yep. And uh, it was kind of a touchy subject for him. It was just it was wrong. You yeah. Know, it was just wrong information. Yeah. Um, as a history guy, it's funny because there's certain things that, as a history person, you would expect that to kind of rub him the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Uh, dates that are completely wrong. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like, this happened in 1843. Well, they didn't build the place until 1870, so I don't see. <laughs> oh, I don't see how that could. You know. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know what I mean? Yeah. He just does his you got thing. the accent down there. <laughs> yeah, that was. I, I try. I try. Uh, the thing with the Loon Lake one. Uh, the Me- Megadeth, the song Mary right. Jane, you know, yep. that's what really I feel like compelled yeah. that one to another level. Yep. And then you get the people from Jackson and around the area that are just, you know, like I told you before, pre show, that we've had issues going out there and talking about it. Right. Even mentioning it seems to rub people the wrong it's, way. Yeah. Yep. Some some people are just kind of touchy about that. And I mean, I'm sure they, they have their reasons yeah, for that. 100%, you know? Yeah. 100%. Um, yeah. You know, we're not from there. We don't know, you right. know what the whole thing is with that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's cool. I mean, Adrian was like there for that. You know, he was yeah, with well, the yeah. Megadeth guy. And, and that's, yep. you know, it's that, yep. was, that was a pretty cool story. Wow. Uh, and I know we talked about that on our on our episode, too. People yeah. People seem to. Yep. To dig that, but I think it's 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 really interesting when you do this kind of thing, uh, especially with investigation stuff. When you're going to places, you yep. know, I think people are a little more open to it nowadays because it's it's bringing the right kind of attention. Yeah, you know. Yep. But uh, there's some places where they're just they're not about it. You really, know? they don't they don't want to be painted in that kind of light. Yeah, even though it's going to bring people in, and yep. it, you know, yep. um, the. Uh, the the place I told my story about, right? Mm-hmm. The the theater. So it's a place called the West Hills. I was going to ask Oatana. you about the theater. Yep. It, like is a notoriously it's, haunted. It, it is. There's been a lot of stories. Really? There's been a lot of stuff. A lot of different accounts from different people. And the thing about this place is, I mean, so after I when I was older, right? Yeah. Um, probably a little younger than you guys. I mean, I'd yeah. say maybe like early 20s, late gotcha. teens. Uh, yeah. I had some friends that I kind of ran around with, and we would always go back to this place oh. at night. Uh, and everything's closed off. You can't get in, but there's different buildings. Yeah. Um, and we would always go there and bring the camera and kind of just, you know, it's just a, it's a spooky place. Yeah. You know, yeah. even if you're not necessarily seeing things, uh-huh. when, I mean, you're mm-hmm. you're still seeing things. Yeah. You yep. know. Yep. Um, and now that I do, you know, we could say I do it a little bit more professionally. It's like I, I want to get in there in the worst way. Mm. And uh, and I was told, I mean, I, no exaggeration. I mean, I, I've talked with like Travel Channel producers about ways of getting in there, trying to do something, and they just it doesn't matter who you are. Really, it doesn't matter how much clout you have. Wow. If, if it's paranormal, new. No. Yeah, I. Wow. Um, 
one of one of my friends I graduated with, her uh, her mom is like on the board, so it's kind of a board situation where there's yep. a few people that sort of run everything. Yep. Um, I was able to figure that out. I was able to talk to her, and I thought like this is my end. Yeah. I'm going to do an investiga- an actual investigation. Yeah. I figured we could tell the whole story here. Yeah. This is yeah. where it started for yep. me when I was nine. Yep. You know, and now I'm a professional. I want to come in here and I want to yeah. you know exactly. And uh, her mom reached out to me and was like, I, I love it. I think it sounds great. She's like, I, I hate to tell you, She's, it's, it'll, it's never going to happen. Wow. She goes, hey, there's there's some people here <clears throat> that if it, in any sense it, it becomes paranormal, they just not interested. They, wow. sh- they shut it down, which is just, Dang. I still don't, and, the, and I don't think I can accept it. No, you know, I feel like no. it'll be my lifelong mission yeah. to, to make that happen. Yeah. You know. Well, but, here's the thing. I'm going to just go off a limb and say that it, it could be religious people older yep. religious people yep and it has just something to do with that for some reason uh paranormal rubs with demonism or yeah. satan or, so you know, opening doors exa- and they yeah, don't understand yeah, the yeah, you know the yeah, nature of that yeah and, yeah and we, we even try to put the spin on it too of it's like you know it works the other way too you know the 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 theory or the thought that this place is haunted obviously already exists oh 100 percent. you know maybe we're coming in with all of our technology and we're going to prove that it's not yeah you know what i mean you kind of see that angle too and i kind of thought well maybe that would work you know like let's prove that there's nothing here Mm -hmm. you know if we get it cool if we don't that you know that works but it's i think you're right i think it's there's an older generation of of thinking where they just don't you know like my dad my dad's that example it's taken me a long time to convince him like the ouija another really quick funny story right again my mom (laughs) yeah kind of into it you know we've kind of share in our our kind of enjoyment of the paranormal stuff and i think she bought a she found a ouija board i don't know if it was at a yard sale or whatever Mm. this is quite a few years ago yeah now you can buy a ouija board anywhere oh yeah just doesn't get them at walmart Walmart. yeah yeah, yeah. it doesn't matter anymore but uh, you know for a long time that was there was definitely this you know this taboo nature of ouija board well she found one brought it home and my dad, it took everything my dad could do to not like destroy it. And, and my mom, <laughs> my mom loves to tell this story. It was just one, I don't know if something was going wrong, some kind of bad luck, whatever yep. it was. And and, yep. and my mom called me up. She's dying, just just laughing her ass <laughs> off. Right? She's like, "You're not gonna believe what your dad just did." You know? And uh, he had some kind of fit, and he took he started a bonfire, and he took the Ouija board and like obliterated it, really? just destroyed it, took all of his all of his aggression out on this yep. thing. Um, and that to me, that's just the the funniest thing ever, you know. Because now I have another one on my shelf, and I tell him like, Dad, it's not, it's just it's, yeah. In my in my opinion, it's a parlor trick, you yeah. know. I, oh, 100%. Uh, I have friends that'll tell me very differently, and mm-hmm. I, you know, and and I'm respectful of that. I'm not going to say that things don't happen, but kind of yeah. like you, you know, yeah. we have we have our experiences in different ways. Yeah, exactly. Um, personally, with me, hands on with the Ouija board, I just have never really experienced anything no, no. that I am like, this is other world. Yeah, you know, you know, and I've looked into the Ouija board too. I talked to it with Adrian, and we watched a video. Um, where they almost like disprove it because I don't know the name of the theory or what it's called, but if you hold a string with a weight on the end of it out and you focus on it to go counterclockwise yeah. or clockwise, it'll yeah, yeah, spin yeah. that uh, way. Pendulum or, yeah. yeah, it's kind of the same thing. If you When you put your hands on the thing, you yeah. have two people doing it, Yep. Your muscles move without you even knowing it. You know, you could have your right. hand completely still and it's moving. That's that's exactly it. So yep. if you want it to go to yes or no, it's gonna go kind of one way. You there's you, I think there's there's definitely a power of suggestion, which like you kind of to what you're saying, it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that somebody's faking it. No, you know, it's, yeah, it could. No. There's you have these auto responses and your muscles, and the whole thing is you got. You're hovering, you know. You're yeah. not. You don't. You're not resting your elbows on anything. Yep. You are literally holding your arms up yep. and trying very lightly yep. to barely not touch over, it at all. And doing yeah. in doing that, your muscles are going to react to that. Oh, 100 percent. Uh, but I think when you're watching and you buy into that, there's this power of suggestion now. Yep. Um, that just kind of maybe unintentionally takes over. Yep. And uh, we were doing one of our investigations with uh, I, I run with a team called Dark Corner Investigations. So okay. that's the paranormal group that I that I work with. And yep. we were down in Iowa, and uh, I think we kind of we put it to the test because we had different people doing Ouija board sessions, and it seemed like when you're watching it, 
things are things are happening. Mm-hmm. Things are, and uh, there's me and a couple other guys who are a little more skeptical about it. And we figure, mm-hmm. let's, let's try this, yep. right? But we're not going to look at the board. Oh. That's that's our thing. We're yep. going to close yep. our eyes. We're not yep. going to look at it. Yep. And of course, it's still moving around and stuff. But I mean, it's just completely gibberish. Yeah, was nothing. <laughs> and you know, this so is like, the, either this that is... spirit is drunk or <laughs> yep. And I brought that up to Adrian. I said, yeah. if the Ouija board is real. Um, what would happen if you blindfold it? Yep. And this is his response, and I'm pretty, I'm almost 100% sure this is what he said. If I'm wrong, I'll correct myself, but I'm pretty sure Adrian said that the spirits live through us. Yeah. And so they need our eyes to be able to see because they That's need, fair. they yeah. need to, uh, like, I don't know what you want to call it, they need to come into something to move it. Right. Just as if, uh, you know, certain people can be like possessed. It's not like a possession. It's like they're using your body to right. tell you something. Yeah. I don't know like 100% about it, but that's what, because I remember bringing that exact thing sure. up to Adrian before. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I mean, that sounds, that just sounds like a guy who's probably been asked that question exactly. quite a yeah. few times. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to say that I don't believe that. I guess uh-huh. that, that makes sense. You yeah. Know? And he's smart. He's got a way yep. of kind of explaining those yep. things. Yep. Um, I don't. I just don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I mean? You know, and I, I don't. I don't know enough about it. That's why when Adrian yeah. comes on, I have a hundred thousand questions, and we end up talking <laughs> yeah. forever. Got like a big list of things. <laughs> I like do. Plus, I do. Because yeah. it's you know, you everyone seems to have a a good thing to debunk it, and then I tell Adrian that, and he's like, well. Here's the the reason why, and yep. then you're like, oh, I didn't even think of that. Like, I would have never thought that right, they need your right. eyes to he's see. He's got he's got so many theories about some of that stuff, and I mean, and I think it's fascinating. It you is, know, I yeah. think it's one of those things where you just you don't want to. I'm never going to shoot any of that down. Yep. I, I hope that yep. I can kind of catch that side of it. Yep. You know, I think for me, the the most compelling evidence that I've ever gotten has always been with with the digital stuff. Mm. You know, there's a, a, a popular tool called a spirit box. Is that like the thing that goes like? Um, yep, yep. It makes yep. Like, it, we did that live on the podcast. Oh, did you really? And it was talking to us. Did it? Yeah, oh yeah, hundred percent. But it's... I guarantee, if we tried it on our own, we wouldn't. It right. wouldn't work. Nothing. Adrian yeah. was here, and it was like you could hear exactly. It, it wouldn't words. shut up. It wouldn't, it wouldn't shut wouldn't up. Stop no. talking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I love that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. To me, that's the most compelling. Yeah. Um, and I, and I have one of those. And we've had so after experiencing stuff in my house that I live in now. Yep. Quick, yeah, I got so many stories about that. make it a quick. <laughs> I one. love it. I love it. Um, so we have uh, we kind of would hear things in our house that would go bump uh, in the mm-hmm. night and just you know little things here and there where we're like yeah. let's let's, find let's out. try it out let's find yeah. out you know <laughs> um, yeah so I ended up getting a spirit box and uh, we would kind of do some sessions in the house and. It's again, it's one of those things where, you know, you can always go at it with some skepticism because Mm -hmm. what it's doing is it's rapidly going through radio frequencies. I was going to ask you, what's the science behind that? that? That's really what it does. So it has to do with just the the white noise or something about that frequency that we can't necessarily pick up with our, our naked ear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and it's it's kind of it's like an EVP. It's the same thing. You have some kind of recording device, yep. right? There's certain frequencies you're not going to hear by yourself. Yeah. But you record it in these certain frequencies, and it's just it's e- I think it's easy for them. It's easy energy to manipulate. Yeah. You know because yep. it's so faint that we can't even hear it. Exactly. But it's enough energy that they can maybe manipulate. Yeah. And make words out of. But I think the spirit box takes that to the next level because it's gonna it. Kind of like with what Adrian's saying, and them needing like a vessel, right? Something, it, it'll yeah. go through radio frequencies, and there yep. are voices that will come through. Yep. And I think the logic is that they can use those voices that exist to kind of create, you yep. know, create some context. Exactly. Um, now, right away with that statement, half the people are, are like, "That's bullshit." Yeah. So none yeah. of that's real. Uh-huh. So what you're saying is we're hearing radio voices, <laughs> but what's interesting about it is it rapid. It goes through it so fast. Yep. You know, that, I mean, you're going to hear voices, but it's very clear when it's just random pops yeah. and noises and different voices. Yep. When you when it scans through, you know, we'll just say 60 or 70 different channels, mm-hmm. and you get a sentence out of that, that's, that's crazy. clearly coming from the same voice. Yeah. Well, that's impossible. Yeah. You know, that yep. just doesn't, there's no yep. way really for that to happen. And the argument is that the spirits are, ener- it's an energy. It's energy. It's energy. Yep. And so they need something to put that energy through right and that is the, like you said the vessel that's they what use. they're using yeah that's how, that's I, how see I, I feel like most people can wrap their head around that yeah yeah it's, that's nothing that's too out there nope, it's that's not, not, yeah, too, it's not too far-fetched and you still have the people that are kind of like well i i gotta see it i gotta yeah. hear it you yeah know? and that's okay yeah yep. i think that's good i don't think you should ever buy into anything yep. unless you can really try it or exactly. hear it 
Yep. You know, um, yep. but uh, but I, I did that and I got a name come that uh, came through. You really? got a lot of random stuff. And I, I asked and I have it on film. Wow. Uh, and I just I asked point blank, like, what's your name? Yeah. And clear as day, you get a voice to come through that says Sid. Really? And my thought is, OK, that's kind of a weird name. So yeah. it's probably coincidence, <laughs> you know, like yeah. Sid. What, what kind of it sounds <laughs> like a sinister name. Exactly. Well, uh, my wife ended up kind of digging in a little bit. She's like, well, let's, yep. let's find out, you know, let's see if there's any, any weight to that. Um, and she's kind of a history buff too. She loves to dig in and research. She's and I mean, the female I, Adrian. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, I'm just not, you know, I yeah. probably never would have known cause I don't, yep. I just don't do my home. You know, yep. I have the fun, the fun <laughs> stuff, yep. you know? Yep. Um, but she started digging in, looked up for the name Sid. Uh-huh. Um, and we got a couple hits. And uh, the the big hit is there's a there's a guy named uh, John, uh, Jonathan Sidney Much. He was a World War One veteran. Really, which I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. Yep. Um, until we realized that he owned the whole plot of land that our house sits on. Really. So that was the moment when I'm like, uh, oh shit! <laughs> the, it's like it's not even it's a coincidence. Real. I'm like, yeah. well, my my first thought is, wow, that's yep. real. Yep. My other thought is nobody's going to believe me. No, everybody's no. going to think I'm, I knew that ahead of time. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean yep. that's just the thing with with TV and film. You know, yeah. But to me, I, that's it's crazy. Doesn't get any real more yeah. real than that. So yep. we and we've kind of dug in. So we've learned a little bit about this guy, and he owned our house and probably like three or four wow. of our neighbors. It was a farmstead, and he died there. He uh, died. He, he didn't die there. No. Okay. So yeah, and we're there's more history that we want to try to dig into. But no, he. Um, so he was an immigrant who came here, fought in the First World War, had kids, got married, and then he ended up la- early or I'm sorry later on in his life he ended up moving somewhere across town mm. with his wife. Gotcha. But his son took over the house. Oh, and his son, okay. And it was, it was a farm. A lot of Mankato was all farmstead yeah. like back, back, back in the oh, day. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Everything was before um, the cities were here. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. And they've obviously, everything has been developed. Oh, but, yeah. But that was kind of cool. So he, yeah, he, um, I mean, was native to Mankato wow. and died in Mankato. That's and crazy. Just a lot of history there. So yeah. our, our thought is, you know, I, I do a lot of research and a lot of filming. We found his, like, gravestone. We went to the really? courthouse, found all the records. So we're like, we're doing this whole thing, kind of making a documentary out of it. And then, yeah. of course, when things kind of slow down and we're not, you know, COVID, we're not doing a whole lot. Yeah. So it's all of a sudden, like, the energy almost kind of picks up. Where I'm really? Like, I'm like, all right, I get it. You want me to tell your story. Yeah. Like, we'll we'll wow. get it. We'll do it. Have but, you done anything after that? Like, all right. Said, I know more about you. I know like the story. Can you tell me anything else or give me another word? You know, have you uh, done anything I, like I that? Have, I, I've done a little bit, like a little bit here yeah. and there. We have, uh, we've tried different things, but I, I think he likes the spirit box. I think, gotcha. I think, he, I think that's his kind of favorite thing. Yep. And, uh, I think our, our next step is I have so the the team that I'm with I got like some little gadgets and stuff the the team that I run with they got like the we call them the big guns you know okay. they got all the <laughs> all the fancy toys and yep, really yep, you know yep. so I think that's our next step is I actually want I'm gonna try to have them actually come in <sighs> wow have a whole lockdown and just get you know like give Sid the floor that's you know, awesome like here you go you got all these different things you can. Yep manipulate and do it and I, I just feel like he's gonna light it up oh yeah you know? hopefully but yeah. you might also get the opposite where right too many people that's true you're not gonna yep. have anything you yep. know what i mean you might be like nope too many people i don't want to do i don't want to talk to any of yep. these strangers uh-huh. get yep. them out of our yep. house exactly you know? yep. yeah they don't live here <laughs> <Yeah>, exactly <laughs> get out. here's another question for you do you've talked about ghosts and everything uh do you believe in demons because we've had demon hunters on the podcast Ooh. before people that are into the and from what I can get from talking to the paranormal investigators and everything, ghosts are they're kind of doing good things. Are they they're not like yeah. in ill intent, whereas a demon is there to cause it trouble. Has, it has a motive. Yeah, it has a motive. Yeah. And do you believe in demons? Uh, demon I, possession. It's a it's such a tough thing for me because I think I think it just a lot of it has to do with experience. So yeah. that's something that I haven't had a lot of personal experience with. Um, but the experiences I have had are enough for me to like. There, there's something there. Yeah. Um, yeah. You just don't want to mess with. It. It's right. Yeah. You always want to be kind of careful. And I mean, it's. I think the part where it's struck, where it's a struggle for me, is I'm just. I'm not. I'm not as religious as I mm-hmm. once was. You yeah. Know? So to me, there's. It's just kind of where is that line drawn? Yeah. You know, there's certain spiritual elements where I kind of. You know, I, I obviously a lot of my colleagues and friends or some of them are really into that. And I'm like, OK, you know, yeah. it's cool. It's fine. It's just not yep. it's not my, you know, it's uh-huh. not necessarily mm-hmm. my thing. But 
there's just sort of that sense of how can you have one without the other? You know, spirits yeah. you can explain because spirits are again they're, they're energy. Yeah. You know, yep. when, when we die, when we pass on, we don't know what happens to exactly. that energy. Yeah. It could be an echo. Yeah. You know, and Adrian talks a little bit about that too. Yep. You know, there could be an echo that's maybe not necessarily intelligent. Yeah. But but we know there's intelligent hauntings. Yep. There's a lot of things to figure out, but that can be energy. Yep. Um, when you bring in demons you yeah. know you bring in darkness it's like yep. that's I mean, that's evil yeah. now we're now we are assigning uh you know an identity to evil <laughs> yeah. um yep. and i mean i i've definitely seen some shit where i'm like i yeah i mean that's that's gotta be legit uh-huh uh, but of course there's kind of that moral ground of i i just don't know how to make sense of it you yeah, know and it exactly. probably maybe means i need to just dive in a little more uh-huh. and, and start conjuring up some stuff and see what happens. I'm but. glad you brought conjuring up because that's kind of from when I've talked to the demon hunter and the paranormal investigators, it seems like everyone's talking about the conjuring up of these things. Like the mm-hmm. evil is conjured up from either a place that has a lot. And apparently Mankato has some evil energy to it. Yeah. Appar- according to this demon hunter, because of the slaying of native Americans. Absolutely. Um, there's yep. a negative energy. And when we've had him on twice, he has talked about a couple locations in town where it's extremely intense. When yep. he goes there, he can feel sure. this isn't a par- This isn't like a spirit. These are demons. These are evil energy. Even when is- he gets close by, he says he gets. He, he can will feel not. It. He can feel it. You it's can a feel horrible it. feeling. Yeah. Um. And it, it's just like a. It's an overlaying dread upon him that he can feel the energy and it's not good energy. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's it's a it's a terrible terrible feeling. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I uh, and I've I've. I'm one of those people, so when we do our investigations, and this is back down in Iowa, our, our same place, I think, I'm, I'm kind of one of those guys where I like to instigate. Yeah. You know, I, I'm yeah. not, I'm, I don't go in timid, I don't go in uh-huh. shy, you know, it's like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm there for a reason, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and we're here for you, if yeah. you're here, you, you know, get out here, you son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, get out, let's yeah. do it, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and that's kind of the fun thing about working with some of these crews, is everybody's a little different in yeah. their, in their approach. Um, yeah. And uh, I uh, I did a little experiment. So we had um, Brent, one of our one of our team leads. He has a Dybbuk box. If you're familiar with no. the Dybbuk box, so no. um, Dybbuk box, kind of a controversial thing. Some people believe in it, some people don't. But it's apparently um, if you entrap a demon within the box mm. and you seal it off, and you can find there's there's I, there's only like a handful of them that are you know apparently genuine you huh. know and and zach baggins talks about it on ghost adventures he's got some in his museum and stuff but really um our uh yeah our friend brent had one that he got from some lady online and it's another one of those things where we we don't have a lot of understanding about it but we still approach it with respect it's yep. they've never opened it really uh, we're kind of waiting to find something like just the perfect time because that doesn't mean we're never gonna open it yeah it'll happen yeah um, but you know, is it we, made out of a certain crystal? Because this guy, the I, demon guy, tells us like certain crystals. And they'll things. do, yeah. They'll put other things in the box, and then usually there's like different etchings or like markings on oh, it, okay. kind of like I don't know, christen it or whatever. And then they're always yeah. sealed with wax. Really? Um, so that's what they typically do with Dybbuk boxes. Um, I've never heard of that before. It's yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. Well, he I had, can look one up here. Just yeah, yeah, to yeah. yeah. You can pull how it do you, up how and, do you spell that? Uh, I think D Y B U K. I think Dybbuk. Box. Dybbuk box. Oh, there's a movie, of course. They oh, yeah, a of movie. course. Anything, there there's yeah. some paranormal type stuff. <laughs> there's always going to be a movie. Yeah, let's see. What, I just, I'm curious as to what it looks like. Is I it, think that's, I think that first one is the Zach Baggins one in the glass case. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of, oh, it looks some, like a little closet almost. Yeah, sometimes it looks like that. There's different, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things you can find if you go on eBay and places, you'll find people that are selling these things. But you never really know, you know. Yeah. Is, it, is there is it genuine history? Mm-hmm. Is somebody trying to, you know, make some money? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you got to admit, seems to be a pretty easy way to make a few <laughs> oh, bucks. Yeah. You know, get a little cabinet. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you can age wood now. You could do anything. You know, yeah. movie props and stuff. You can make anything look old. Yeah, right. You know. Right. You give, give it a nice story. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's yeah. gonna. This is from the seventeen hundreds. Oh, I'll buy it for ten grand. Like. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's uh yeah i mean that's and there's crazy. and there's youtube videos on uh, there's like the the paranormal files is a channel i like to watch and, uh-huh. and this dude that's one thing he does a lot he'll just go on ebay and be like oh we're gonna buy another box let's, <laughs> let's open it let's see what's inside wow. you know and some of them have weird things in them huh. and, and some of them don't wow. some of them have nothing huh. you know yep uh but i uh when we were messing with ours i had i was sat in a room yep. and i had the dybbuk box and then i also had my grandpa had this 
uh, anointing of the sick crucifix. He was hardcore oh. Catholic. Yep. And that was something that I took from him after he passed, mm-hmm. you know, just to, it was just a cool relic to have, yeah. oh, you know. Sure. Mm-hmm. It like slides open. It's got little candles that you go in there. And they would they would light this thing when they would pray over people who are on their deathbed. Really? So to me, I'm like, that's just, that's like. It's got to have energy up, to man. it. Yeah, it's yeah like, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's just a cool, yeah. like, dark yeah. thing, you yeah. know. I mean, it's not a dark thing, but, yeah. you know, I'm like, yeah. that's, that's neat. So, uh-huh. But uh, when we went on our last investigation, I sat in a room and I put these two things together. And figured, let's see what happens to the energy when we yeah. have these two things, yep. you know, in plain sight together. And I'm kind of bumping them, and I'm trying, <laughs> I'm doing everything I can to like stir yep. the, the pot. Um, and uh, after we were done with that session, I was like, I was like seeing things in my peripheral vision. Really? Yeah. And I just remember like, okay, I gotta go outside and like walk it off. Wow. You know, and kind of cool off and. Uh, so I did that, and then uh, my friend Jamie, she's kind of our medium, um, mm-hmm. you know, part of our group, and she followed me out, and she was just like, "Yeah, we're we need to we need to do a really? cleanse. We need a cleanse because there's something." Wow. And I'm like, I thought I was seeing shit, you know, yeah. like I don't yeah. know if the like, things yep. are gonna come out of the shadows That's and attack crazy. me. That was a little weird, but I just felt so hyped up. Uh huh. You know, I felt like I drank a whole pot of coffee. Like I'm getting, you know, I'm getting really? aggressive, and that's one of the signs. You really? know, that, like, dark energy can affect people differently, and that's one of them. You just get yeah. all, like, aggressive, and yep. I was like, okay. But she, you know, saged me off, and then we were fine. But that's So, crazy. I mean, I've had little experiences like yeah. that where I'm like, you know, could that just could that just be me getting all worked up in the moment? Uh-huh. Like, you know, maybe, but... Yep. I like to think that I'm pretty, I'm pretty even keeled. Uh-huh. You know, it doesn't. It takes a lot to kind of affect me because I've yep. just been doing it for so long. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and it's good um, to remain skeptical about yeah. everything. You know, you yeah. always want to go into a skepticism and uh, you know not go in where you'll believe everything. Because right. That you get some of these people that go and sometimes I'm watching like the ghost adventure show or whatever. And it's yeah. like every little tiny thing, you know, and you got to think, Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. well, there's money involved here. And whenever there's money involved, there needs to be a product. Correct. And you, yep. uh, you should know, I mean, being a paranormal investigator, you're going to go to these places and not every time something's going to happen. Right. You know? And so yeah. they're going every time. It's like every time something happens, what are the odds that, you know, it's, it's yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's you hard know? to know. It's hard to know what is, you know, yeah, what's yeah. being genuine, or yeah. they kind of, are they sort of play into the, uh, you know, play into the camera a little bit to, yep. to make a show. Yeah, and, uh, and and I've I've kind of seen I've seen that side of it. Yep. Um, and I, I've been pleasantly surprised to to know that most shows and most people, at at their at their heart of hearts, they're trying to get the real thing. Oh yeah. You know, I don't yep. think I've ever met anybody who's blatantly been like, okay, we're gonna like crazy we're gonna create you know i'm gonna have some i mean there's a difference (laughs) between we've we've made a movie uh a movie or two with with my actual paranormal group we did we made a fiction movie oh really um where that was a much different situation because part of the story it's we're kind of like a ghost adventures team yeah right within the movie and the the shtick for that is they all had they had the gags all set up we didn't get to know about it Mm. So I'm talking with the director, and he's like, yeah, so you're going to go in here. You're doing stuff just like you normally. You've done a 100 times. But yep. He's like, we have things rigged, and you don't get to know what That's those are. That's pretty cool. So, you know, so we know we're going to get the shit scared out yeah. of us. You know? so They're that, genuine that was, scares. Yeah. yeah. So that so that was cool. That was yeah. kind of a neat experience, and, and there were a few times when it, it, it got us. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, it's but like a real haunted house. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's a difference between doing something like that and, you know, when you have the the – the front of like we're yeah. trying to investigate, we're trying to help these people, yeah. and I think most of them are are pretty genuine. But you know, you're right. And yeah. T- TV, you know, when there's a product, when there's money involved, yeah, is some of that stuff maybe? A, I don't want to necessarily say it's faked, but we could probably say embellished, embellished for sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. you said you, a simple bump. Yeah, which could very easily be explained. <laughs> you know, if we're making a TV show, we're probably going to amp that up. Yeah, like, oh, oh my sure. god, something's you, here. Yeah, what is it? You yeah. know, let's yeah. go figure it out. We got to yeah. figure it out. I'm yeah. feeling. Look at it. Look at my goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's yeah, the hundred percent. I, I I love watching Zach Baggins on all of his shows, but I also <laughs> love how much people make fun of him. Yeah, you know, he's oh, just yeah. one of those. <laughs> this was the last time, <laughs> anybody. <laughs> That was uh, so Jack too. He's like, yeah. yeah, let's go in and kill this guy. I had to when, when we made our the our like fake our fake movie. Yeah, right, our ghost, uh, like I basically played the uh, Zach Baggins like oh, really? character. Yeah, probably the most fun I've ever. Oh had. Yeah. I just got to, I just got to be like that douchey guy. Yeah. You know, like uh-huh. we're gonna go in where nobody's ever. Go- I mean, I, just, I could after we 
we were done, I couldn't turn the voice <laughs> off. I just yeah. kept going, you know. And then <laughs> when we started awesome. we going back to our real investigations, everybody had to be like, okay, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't do the Zach Don't bangers. do that. <laughs> just yeah. That's pipe, awesome. Pipe that down. <laughs> I'm going to bring something here. We haven't done this in a while. It is something we used to do quite frequently on the podcast. It is called What the Fake. And so what we have here is we have three movie horror movie posters. One of Ooh. them is a fake movie that's never came out. The other two are real. And sure. so we'll start off here. Number one, <laughs> uh, the movie is called Combust. Ooh. And um, spontaneous human combustion <laughs> barely counts at a ca- or one case every four years all over the world. This month, there are 37 in a single town in theaters, October 31st. I don't want to live in that town. No, yeah. So a girl's <laughs> eyes are burning out here. Yeah. Uh, so that's number one. I'm so guessing that one's real. Let's go to number two here. Maniac, I warned you not to go out tonight. Maniac, and this one's a little blurry. Obviously, like an eighties retro, yeah, oh yeah, definitely has B that. movie, yep. you know, yep. kind of cheap budget made. Yep, he's got a head in his head, <laughs> or maybe just Hold cut the, the scalp off. <laughs> right, something, something that's clearly bleeding. Yep, yeah. I can't read any details on this one down here. It looks kind of, kind of blurry. So that's yeah. number two. Some credits, and then Blood Diner, Stone Cold classic, right there. So, oh, you know that you know <laughs> oh, this yeah. one. Okay, yep. so first they greet you. Then they eat you. <laughs> I love the poster. The, they don't, yeah, that, they don't that, do posters like this anymore. No, no, no. They don't do no. the cool it's hand a, drawn, painted. It's a, it's a loss. Yeah, I hope I didn't ruin the game by calling that out. Well, right away. now you can narrow it down. Okay. Because I know which one's fake. Okay. okay. He doesn't. He doesn't. Oh, I don't know. I gave you a hint. Yeah. yeah. So you Thank guys you. can narrow it down right. between combust or maniac. So we got two here. An older one, and you know this one. Has the the vibe of like a modern movie, yeah, to it. and this one looks feels... like an older right movie. Right. So, yeah. which one are you? First of all, Wesley, which one are you gonna say is fake? God, I you know I think that as far as I know, I've never seen any good like human combustion movies. <laughs> um, it's a ridiculous enough a ridiculous enough thing where it's like it could be real, but I. I don't feel like that. Okay, so you're going this one. I feel, yeah, I think that one's probably fake. I know something about the maniac thing is just too retro and gross (laughs) for me. Well, if you picked that one, I gotta go maniac. You're going maniac. (laughs) Okay, so Colin's saying maniac is fake, and I wish I had the dates on these. And combust, Wesley's saying is fake. Well, the fake movie. Drum roll, please. Combust is fake. Okay. I found there's, it's a oh, fake movie I'm kinda, poster. I'm kind of disappointed by that, <laughs> yeah. actually. Yeah, I think Maniac actually came out in, if I bl- I think it was 1980. I'm okay. just going to double check on that because I love classic. Yeah, yeah, that's it's just like that one just has that retro vibe yep. of like, yeah. that's just too, too nice. I think it's 1980. Let's double check. Maniac movie, 1980 film. Okay. Let's see what this one's about just because I'm curious. Yeah. It's a psychological slasher film. Uh, with a minuscule budget and Ooh. the story censorship. Ooh, they had to censor it. Uh, it must have been worse than an R rating. And they made a second one. And then they which made back a in remake. the 80s probably just meant a little too much blood. Exactly, you know? yeah, yeah. But it's so cool <laughs> that they used to do that stuff back right. then. You yep. know? It says, Frank Zitto was abused as a child by his prostitute mother and as a result became a serial killer. So it's kind of ah, got the okay. traditional story, kind of yeah, like Michael yeah. Myers a little yep. bit. Uh, cla- I'm gonna have to watch that. Yeah, I say I don't know if I've ever actually seen that. You've I mean, seen the diner one though. I, f- I have seen Blood Diner. Yeah, What's that one about? Uh, oh God, I couldn't <laughs> even tell you necessarily. You the basically plot, find but... out from reading the post. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. Yeah, yeah those classic. That's, B that's movies. another one of those like classic, super campy, over the yep. top. <laughs> Could never get away with it today. No, but no. back then, you know, it's just love a, them. Those a are diamond my diamond in the rough. Yep. Yeah, the poster's definitely the best part. Oh though. yeah, I mean that's one yeah. of those things. Yeah, poster's better than any movie have you seen night of the demons before uh i have seen night of the demons. i love night yep. of the demons that's yep. one of my favorite retro b movies Absolutely. so crazy and they made a second one and a third yep, one and then they going. made a remake they in 2007 or whatever yep. <laughs> so I, like we talked about in the beginning <laughs> yeah i'm a, you know and that's the thing is as a filmmaker i think it's almost it's almost taboo for me to to be okay with that mm-hmm. i think most film critic people oh. will just dog on like oh, you yeah. got all these remakes and you got all this stuff 
I'm like, I, I just can't help it. Yep. I, I, I understand why people hate it. Yep. But I just kind of dig it. You I know, love it, I'm yeah. like, there's something like Pet Cemetery, right? Oh, yeah. I love, like, to me, nothing beats the original Pet Cemetery. Yep. Never. Yep. I mean, of course, nothing beats the book, mm-hmm. but nothing beats that classic movie. Yeah. But when they did the remake, I was like, well, cool. I want to see, who, yeah. you know, I want to yeah. see somebody take that on. Like, yep. The ball's on that director to be yep. like, I'm going to take one of the greatest horror movies of all time uh-huh. and I'm going to make my own version of it. Yep. You know, most <laughs> yep. people would be like, no, and, and, <laughs> Don't but do I'm it. one of those guys where I'm like, okay, I got to see it. Yeah. You know? And people try to compare them to like modern movies. You can't. You can't. It's, it's different. It's different just, time, yep. different period. Yep. You know, they had different budgets and stuff. Different yep. challenges. Different challenges. It's all, yeah. but, but then that's what's, to me, that's what's cool about oh, it. Yeah. I want to see yep. how, take this really good story and how does that fit the mold of like today? Yeah. You know, yep. with all the advancements and things yep. that we have today that they didn't back then. I yep. think. I think that's cool. And that's what it's all about. That's why I like, like Rob Zombie's Halloween remakes. Oh, yeah. That's why I like those movies because yep. it's that's what he did. Yep. You know, that's what John Carpenter told him to do. He He's said, like, do your own thing. Make your own story. Yep. Like don't carbon copy my thing. Exactly. I want, you know, and, and he did. Yep. Like John Carpenter wasn't a crazy huge fan of no. it. But that's because Rob Zombie's over the top oh, and yeah. super grotesque, and yep. that's why we like it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, I got to thank you, Wesley, so much for coming on. This has been awesome. My pleasure. Covered Appreciate a lot it. of things tonight. It's yeah. been fun. We're going to put a, a link, fun. Paranormal Factor Fiction. We'll yes. get that in there. Yeah. And we're also going to get a link for the movie. Uh, what was the name of that uh, again? The Curse of Raven Heights. Curse of Raven Heights. Yep. And then also, anything else you're working on, if you want to talk about anything else, any projects. I know you said there's a couple things coming up with Adrian in the future. Yeah, yeah. That you're gonna, yeah. But you probably don't want to reveal anything. It's Yeah, well, there's a lot of things we're still trying to work out, yeah. you know, obviously yep. in the age of COVID. I would say uh, best place to probably keep up to date with all that stuff so i i have a facebook page uh called west effect entertainment okay so that's just kind of my little corner of the the web where i sort of all my stuff's there but all other projects i'm affiliated with i usually funnel through there perfect too. so if you're we'll put that on want to keep up with everything that's yeah. probably the place to go awesome i link to all the other stuff you know perfect there, so yeah we'll get all the links in there to oh. everyone watching uh thanks for tuning in we'll be back next week i think we have a guy on who uh, says he is the second coming of Jesus Christ. So that'll be an interesting I'm one. I'm coming back. <laughs> that'll <laughs> be a, sit in the corner. He, right? Well, yeah. he, he's in Hawaii, so it'll have to be oh, a Zoom call. Be <laughs> yeah, he, he, awesome. he's in Hawaii, so that'll be a very yeah. interesting episode. That sounds so, great. Thanks again, Wesley. Yeah. This has been awesome. Thanks to everyone watching, uh, leave us a review. Uh, if you have any guests you'd like to get on, we'd love to hear your suggestions. Also, topics, anything you'd like us to talk about. We'll be back next week. This is the Ethan Claire Podcast Show.